Well, uh, but first, a uh, dear friend of ours from WTIS, Pastor Tom Atchison from New Beginnings. Uh, if you hadn't seen it yet, there's a front page story in the Tampa Bay Times this past Sunday about his ministry uh, that uh, to me looked very one sided and didn't really give a full landscape of uh, Pastor Atchison and his program, New Beginnings. And so uh, we said, let's get him on the phone and let's uh, get his side of the story because uh, to me, it doesn't appear like his side of the story was given in this story. So he's here with us now on the phone. Pastor Tom, how are you, brother? I'm great, man. You sound wild at the beginning of your show there. Dude, I'm fired up. I had like three cups of coffee. I'm on fire today. All right, so in this story, it's called Strings Attached, and it talks about a local homeless program. Again, you guys, New Beginning, that uses it, provides a steady labor force and as a revenue source, and the critics are calling it indentured servitude. Uh, there was lots of stuff in here said, uh, let's figure out some of this. Let's break it all down. Uh, set this up for me uh, the way you know you want to tell your side of the story here. All right, the most important part where I'm, I'm being called the Uncle Tom and, I'm, and, and slavery, there was actually, you probably don't know this, but the actual Kevin Beckner of all commissioners, he actually filed, it was front page in the St. Pete Times again today, asking Kathy Castor to file federal charges of slavery uh, charges and all kinds of stuff like that, you know, against us. And it's like, are you kidding me? And, 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 and I just want to say, stop this nonsense. Um, the the St. Pete Times, I thought they were a good paper. They wouldn't publish such blatant garbage. But the most important thing they're saying there that is not true is, I mean, everything is not true, but let's start with the beginning. First of all, we don't use homeless people to go to the sports games. We don't use people in emergency shelter to go to the uh, sports games. Can you imagine using somebody that's homeless off the street to, to cash out a register and serve hot dogs? They'd be eating the hot dogs, stealing the beer, taking the money out of the register, and running down the street. I mean, that's just totally ridiculous. So I'm having all these emails coming to me, nasty emails, death threats even, uh, telling me that I'm the worst scum of the earth, that I'm a slave, and they, don't, they, don't, they know nothing about us except for the article. Everybody who knows us has been here knows better, but all these people who read the article, um, it, it, it sounds like I use homeless and people out of emergency shelter and that I work them 40, 50 hours a week. The truth is this. We use people at the games that come through our transitional housing program that has already proven themselves, that are on the right track with recovery, um, they're usually within three months of getting their own place, get, looking for their own job, and they work these games, and they love working the games. But here's the thing. It made it sound – the article makes it sound like I work them tons of work every week. How many Bucks games did we have this week, too? No, we had we, – yeah, yeah, you have one a week. You know, that's okay. it. Yeah. All right, so five, six hours every game. Maybe they work ten hours a week. If there's two games, it's like five, six-hour shifts. They maybe work two games a week, um, you know, ten hours, maybe 15 on a busy week. I, I can't believe that he's, not, he's writing saying slave labor, you know, 10 to 15 hours a week for them to be able to come and be in our program and help support what new because because Aramark, you know, the Bucks and uh, the Rays, they actually don't they what they do is they donate money to us, you know, as a nonprofit for our sending us guys there. And that helps cover a lot of the expenses of guys we bring in that we don't charge. You know, we obviously, you know, our ministry, we bring a lot of people off the street. Uh, we feed um, over 200 meals a day to the homeless. Uh, we use this money to pay for those things. But the article makes it sound like we're working these guys to death, homeless people off the street, taking advantage of them, uh, not giving them any money. Um, I mean, it's just, just totally – anybody who comes and visits our property, I would challenge anybody who read that article and thinks it's true, just come visit our property. And within 25 minutes, I guarantee you, you'll have said, how could they write such a piece of trash? Okay. Let's break up some of the other things they put here. I'm going to give you a chance to, right. to, to go after them, okay? Uh, the first one here that I saw is, according to them, you had in t- 2013 uh, funding that came in to $932,816, yep. and expenses of $823,000, making a difference of about $108,000. Explain that one. Well, if you look at, at the year before, we went in the hole 100000 So all that did was make up for the year. He didn't, and he knew that, but he didn't quote the year before where we were in the hole 100000 Then we were 100000 ahead. I mean, actually, if you were to go back over a five-year period, we almost are every year break out about even. Okay. You know, it, it, it comes out even. But uh, we, we, all of our guys, volunteers, they don't draw. I draw salary from the church, small salary. I don't draw any income from New Beginnings. We don't have. I wish I could, but we can't. We, we, there's there's not enough resources to do it. But also, he makes it sound like we get all these grants 
Plus, mm-hmm. we, we, get, we have not gotten any grant from the county or the city in the last five, six years, maybe longer than that. We don't get grants like that. I, I don't know where he's getting that, that we're getting grant money. And then the paper today, is, you know, Kevin Beckner wanted to do this investigation into labor practices. I just wish he would get out of his office, come down to New Beginnings, and see what we're really about uh, in, instead of taking the word of Will Hobson in the paper or a few former addicts that are telling him how horrible we are and actually see what's really happening here. Okay, now let's go to the next one here as the story continues. It's a rather long piece. Uh, the section that talks about creative deposits. Ada Miller, who used to, who was part of your organization for a while, uh, again claims that you did several illegal things yep. and devised a creative deposit system. Tell me about that. Well, okay, Ada Miller and, um, and uh, Victoria Denton, they both made comments to that effect, and they, re- they, they actually stole our records and emails, and, and they turned them all into the FDLE. Now, the FDLE almost filed false police re- false, filing false police reports on them because they did eight months of investigating every receipt, audited us, everything. And, of course, that's on page three of the article. Uh, they, uh, you know, they, 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 he goes through all this evidence, and then at the end of the article, I guess to keep it legal, he says, and the FDLE investigated for eight months, and all charges were proven unfounded, and case was closed. Said, yeah, has it not uncovered anything criminal yeah. or of any concern, is what the report stated. Right. Now, do you suppose if they found two forty thousand dollar checks that I cashed and used personally, you don't think the FDLE would have would have done criminal charges? Well, that's also, yeah, that's another part of it. So that's part of this. So in other words, according to the paper that they showed, they showed pictures of two checks for $40,000 yeah. that you wrote to Butch McPhillips for work, and then and the you same day... And signature is on that check? Ada Miller. Huh, okay. She was working for me and loved our ministry, and after I fired her, all of a sudden, I mean, she was she knew what that was about. There was no secret checks given to um, uh, that Butch gave us. We actually did a presentation in front of the church to Butch because here, here, here Butch donated, he was an engineer, he donated his time, got the trees down, did the demolition, supervised the job for eight months, and all, uh, we wrote, we paid him, he, he gave us a receipt, and he said, man, you all saved my life because I had come through the program and uh, I'm donating it back. He donated it back. It's perfectly legal. The FDLC, they looked at that. They said, this is legal. There's the track record. There's the receipts. The Homeless Coalition at the time did an audit on it, and it was perfectly legal. So I guess what's happening is Will Hobson with the St. Pete Times actually thinks he's he's smarter than, than the uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, who did an extensive investigation and said it's unfounded. Okay. Of course, uh, that's on the third page where it's hard to... Catch, yeah. You know. Again, all the way at the end of the story, well into the story, exactly that's what it says. And it also says they, the Tampa police closed their case without seeking any charges. And so there's nothing there from that also. All right, Tom, I want to do this. I want to take a break, but then there's a couple more things I want to clear okay. up in here, okay? All right. All right, so let's do this. We're going to take a quick break on the show, and then Tom Atchison, we're going to continue to go through this uh, front page article that appeared Sunday about New Beginnings and allow him to clarify some of these statements and show uh, uh, his side of what happened here. So everybody hang in for a second on this. When we come back, we'll talk Talk more, Pastor Tom Atchison. Again, later on, we'll give you some of our Oakdale Christmas display remote. Jack Kozak's going to be here from uh, from uh, Noah's Ark. And Karen Dove as well has an amazing Christmas story to tell us. We'll be right back. I love you, and I love Jesus. Serving Tampa Bay and nine surrounding Central Florida counties for over 36-plus years, this is Inspiration AM 1110, WTIS Tampa. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Thanks so much for listening to the Pete O'Shea Show. It's right here for you on Inspiration AM 1110 WTIS. I am your brother in Jesus Christ, Pete O'Shea. I got my brother, Tom Colley, on the board. We do want to hear from you, 855-265-29, or you can text in now to the broadcast, 727-487-9863. Weigh in on what we're talking about right now. Uh, we're talking to Pastor Tom Atchison from New Beginnings. Uh, if you guys uh, saw Sunday, again, there was a large, very large story, front page story written about him and his ministry it takes him to task on several things, and so we brought him on today to allow him to have his side of the story. Now, Tom, I want to get back to this here. Uh, on, in that third page, he says here, uh, uh, let's see, uh, he said uh, there were times where yeah, other former employees said there were times where you took money from Social Security checks and food stamps provided by your homeless residents and kept more than residents actually owed for room and board. And Lee Hoffman here says that you said they're drug addicts and alcoholics. They're just going to spend it on cigarettes and booze. Well, 
what you just said, that is actually probably the most true things in the article, only slant. You know how the truth can be partial? Mm-hmm. Yes. When, when people first, not after they're here a while, but when they first come in the program, a crack, anybody who knows anything about drug addicts, you do not give a crack addict $10. It's a guarantee they're going to relapse. I mean, uh, sex and, uh, you know, women and, and money are the two biggest relapsing things. You can't give them money. So we do keep their money, but we give it to them. I, I wrote checks out as much as $7,000 when somebody's left the program. Of course, Hobner knew that, but he didn't say that. When they leave the program, the money they saved while they were working, that we, they can get apartment, get their car, and different things. So in, that, in one sense, when they first come in the program, we do keep their money, but we, we don't keep it past you know their room and board. But also, um, uh, it says, uh, the second thing you asked me, I think, was, um, oh, yeah, do we open up mail and, and Social Security checks? Yes, we do. Only the one, right now, I mean, it sounds like we open a bunch of checks, but there is actually one right now, and there, for a while there was three, now there's only one, where the check, the Social Security check, because the person is not capable and mentally able to handle their own money, the, the Social Security Bureau has, bureau has said that they need a, um, a payee. The check is made out to New Beginnings of Tampa for that person. And actually, that check is $710 a month, and we actually only charge him 400 rent because he's one of our outside houses. And uh, every month he come, he'll come like me out during the week and say, I want to buy a $50 Game Boy or something, and we'll give him the money. So he spends his money during the week. So in, in that sense, yeah, we, we do occasionally put Social Security checks in the bank, but we can only do that when we're the payee. Right, okay. So again, you said in that, I've saved a lot of lives by opening mail. Uh, he also well, says... Well, let me, let me expand on that. Go ahead. I, I do, I, I'm actually registered with the post office to be able to do that. When they come in, they sign a commitment that I can open any mail, so it's not illegal what I do. I probably open up 10% of the letters. I don't open up every letter, but let's say a letter comes in from somebody who just came in. It's kind of my judgment call. Let's say someone comes in the program, and they're, they've been on crack for a year, and two weeks into the program, they get a letter from a girlfriend, or their mother even. I will open that because the letter, the letter could say, hey, baby, um, I, I'll meet you down the street on Tuesday at 9 o'clock, and let's get together. Well, we can give that letter to them, have somebody sit with them and, and talk them out of, you don't want to do this, you know, and that saves lives. Where if they'd have got that letter, it, the temptation might have been too great, they'd have been out. Right. And then also sometimes good good intention mothers or parents you know they'll send them 20 bucks in the mail and say hey baby get this get your deodorant and all that that you need well we supply all that for them we supply soap and they don't need any of that stuff but sometimes they'll call their mom and go i need money for soap and all you know that kind of thing so what we do is i have reggie who's our case manager he'll take them in and say hey there's 20 bucks sent to you by my mom what do you need do you need a shirt do you what what is it that you need let's go to the store and we'll buy it for him so yeah i do open mail i'm authorized to do that i do it because Again, uh, you know, there's a reason, you know, so that is true. I do open mail, but the article doesn't say why. It just says I open mail and cash social security checks. And it is partially true, but it's for the right reason. And, and let me tell you, most programs do that. Right. Sure. Okay. All right. Now, here's the last one I want to do. It says, while claiming to provide counseling, you employ no one who is actually clinically trained to work with addicts or the mentally ill, and you also state in your application to run Hillsborough County's homeless shelter that you have a degree in theology from a college they couldn't find. Well, let me just tell you this. My mom read the article, and she's very upset. She's saying, all those years we paid for your room and board at college, uh, what were you doing? Were you off swimming, surfing or something? Um, I definitely have a degree. That was totally bogus. It wasn't from an, an accredited like Yale. It was. I actually went two years to St. Paul, Minnesota, Apostolic Bible College. I went two years to Jackson, Mississippi, Jackson College of Ministries. I, I got my degree online for doctorate from Berean. All right, they, Dr. Shockley, who was the president, called me about four years ago and said, hey, we're closing up, you know, because of the new economy and everything. It's just not feasible. Good friend of mine. And so, uh, yeah, it, it, it won't be showing on a regular online thing, okay, and, and which most pastoral colleges, most are not accredited because to get accreditation, you've got to have math and all the other subjects. But I went to pastoral schools to learn theology and, you know, pastoral counseling and Things that that you couldn't you you know you, those courses wouldn't wouldn't uh, wouldn't be uh, creditable to use for uh, a degree program. All right, so now you are one of the three agencies applying to run Hillsborough County's uh, proposed homeless shelter that would have an annual budget of about one point six million dollars. Totally bogus. Remember, I said we received no grants. Right. All right. First of all, he misquoted that because 
it makes it sound like we applied and it's still out there. That was given to DACO three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, it was given to DACO. All right, they they received that grant and they'll they're, they're a good agency. They'll handle it well. They're a lot bigger than us, more capable. That's a big grant. Uh, I can understand them giving it to DACO. You know, we don't have any problem with that. We applied, but um, we did a. So what I'm saying is, he didn't even quote that right. He got. I was just this. I thought he was smarter than he is because I thought he'd at least get some facts straight. He even got that wrong. And at the very end, you said I should be making a hundred thousand plus a year, and I'm not apologizing for it. I deserve it. You also said, uh, according to him, uh, that you want to stop paying employees. You feel bad for 15 years; they have worked their butts off and have nothing, and they're all happy. Uh, you saved my life. I'll do anything for you, Pastor Tom. But it shouldn't be that way. We want to start giving people a future. Absolutely correct, except for the hundred thousand. What I said, and actually, I signed a thing and documented it along with. Other misquotes by Butch and Anthony Raber. He never said we own people. <laughs> you know, so, but anyway, I, we, we signed things we're going to present tomorrow at the commission meeting. But uh, I said that it would be great if I made 100000 a year like some of the CEOs at some of the nonprofits. However, we do whatever we can do to, um, you know, to uh, survive, and it would be great to make that kind of money, but that's not what we're in it for. So he turned that statement around to make it say that, oh, I'm going to get this grant and get 100000 wasn't even close to what was said. But now, when the other thing that was at the end is, that is true. We have so many people that love our program, that have been through it, that come back and work hours voluntarily uh, to, um, you know, because they feel they need to pay back because we've saved their lives off the street and got them jobs. They come back. You know, I got one electrician who nine years ago, he came out of prison, came in our program, and he got a job at an electrical place and needed $100 for tools. I went to Home Depot, bought him his tools, got him the job. Now he's the vice president of an electric company here in Tampa. Every time I have an electrical problem, guess what? If I call him, he stops everything and comes and takes care of it. So we do, but we have a lot of people that come and volunteer their time for counseling and, and, and helping these guys and mentoring them, and none of them get paid. And I wish we did have money to be able to pay these guys. So I was right, and I said, yeah, I got guys here that come and volunteer their time and spend hours. I would love to be able to pay them you know, they're due, you know? I mean, yeah. they deserve it. So I that got, was true. I got about a minute left, Tom. So there's a hearing tomorrow? The commission's having a hearing about well, this? Well, I'm not, not on this, no. It's a public forum, and I'm going to bring a bunch of our guys down to uh, the county building, and we're going to go in there, and I'm going to let them tell the real story, and I'm going to give them all the documentation, all the things that the, the article says, that we work them. I'm going to show them the paper that they signed, saying, you know, where they don't, we don't work the homeless, we don't work the emergency shelter, we don't work people 50 hours a week. They work 10 or 15 hours a week, and they're not dependent on – they don't have to work those games. That's, they don't need to work those games to stay here. Most of them beg us to work the games because they want to see – I mean, can you imagine being able to – instead of having to buy a $50 ticket, they're in there seeing the game at the same time? They mm -hmm. love it, yeah. you know? Yeah. But like I said, it was just totally distorted. Okay. Well, I'm glad you got a chance to do it. After you go to the hearing, I want to hear more about it. So later in the week, let's reach out again and see what's going on. Uh, yeah, well, the Tampa Tribune is going to do a, a great story in the morning showing the documentation and the other side of everything. So Tampa Tribune in the morning. Uh, is going to is going to present my side too. Okay, and we're glad that we were able to do it as well. Pastor Tom Atchison from New it. Beginnings. God bless you, and thanks uh, for coming on today and sharing your side of the story. All right, thank you. I will right, take a break. We come back again. The Oakdale Christmas display remote that we did over the weekend. Me and Jim Brangenberg. We'll play you some of that. The interview with the guy Ted. who put the whole thing together. What a powerful man of God he is, and so much more. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I love you, and I love Jesus. Goodbye, Pete.